<laughs> the Knicks went into Atlanta. And after outstanding starts by Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett, found themselves down by 15. So where do we go for a spark? You know, we know where to go. Where do we go you to know. bail us out? You know where to go? We go to the kid. IQ, a.k.a. Give him the keys. <laughs> Emmanuel quickly, all fourth quarter. Gives us a spark. Yes, sir. 16 points. 10 in the fourth. Followed by clutch. Defensive performance once again. Mm-hmm. By these cardiac Knicks. 113 to 108 JLS. Knicks beat the Hawks. 4 out of 5. 3 out of 4 on the road. Mm-hmm. The identity has been established. These kids are fighting. Yes, for sir, Tom man. Thibodeau. They are fighting for each other. And with the toughest schedule in the league, or one of the toughest in the league. Man, Alfred Payton was going ham in the first. He was dipsy doing, getting to the hole with Gusto yeah. anytime he wanted to. Here's what happened, CP. He got a little bit too comfortable going to the hole. He neglected to kick out to any shooters. And he just chose to keep going to the hole. And it's too tunnel vision, man. It was too tunnel vision. Yeah, the well got empty. Ended up shooting 33% from the field by the end of the day. Fast forward third quarter. IQ comes in with about 30, with about three minutes left in the third quarter. Yo, the, Knicks, the Knicks never turned back and quickly, quickly, quickly takes over the game. Quickly. Combination of quickly and Austin Rivers. Quivers, quivers. Shout out our guy Chris from Knicks Twitter with the <laughs> quivers nickname. And Alan Hahn repped it on the post game show tonight. Man, man, oh man, oh man. They were very pedestrian from three. Didn't shoot it a lot, but um, they played their game in the first half, which is bully ball, inside game, attacked the rim. Julius did his thing. RJ dominated in the paint, and they really didn't need it. They weren't double teaming Julius. You know, RJ was having his way, and things were going well for them. But once the table started turning in the second half and the Hawks started hitting their shots, they started hitting their threes, put the pressure on the Knicks. The Hawks uh, made some defensive adjustments. They start putting Cam Reddish and DeAndre Hunter on Peyton, kind of speeding him up. And Peyton is just, you know, dribbling the life out of the basketball. Yeah. All of a sudden now, we're down by 15. And I'm like, all right, this is new territory for us because where are we going to go? I wanted to see Tibbs go to that three-ball lineup earlier. I thought he went a little bit too long with the starters, and I thought that was going to spell the end of us. Absolutely. But he goes to IQ. He goes to Knox and Rivers near the end of the third IQ ends up finishing that that fourth, and bro, that was what we needed, man. Four minute, 48 second mark, IQ gets the strip on Trey Young. Yeah, from the back. From yes. the back. Then you had the RJ to Mitch Gotham Woo! Live, which was the beautiful. One, ooh, which was absolutely the, beautiful. How did he catch that, Steve? How? Then you had five straight free throw makes by Emmanuel Quickly. You had a clutch Mitchell Robinson block. On Trey Young. Then you had the Austin Rivers three-pointer with a hand in with Trey Young in his face. Knocks down the three and turns it back on, on Trey Young on the other end by drawing the charge. Game-winning plays, Jay Ellis, is what I was saying Austin Rivers can bring to this team. He's battle-tested. He can, he can finish these games, and he's going to be closing these games for this team going forward. We didn't hit three-pointers in the first half, but only Randall was taking them. No one was getting the usual kickouts. IQ only played four minutes in the first half, and I think Knox played six. I think, listen, Julius, once again, bro, 28 points, 17 boards, nine dimes, leading the team in dimes once again, putting the team on his back when they need to. 11 for 19 from the field. Put some respect. We put some respect on his name, JLS. We put some respect on his name. He's making winning plays this year for his team. Found RJ for a beautiful um, drive and cut, in, I believe, in the fourth quarter, which is which is super clutch. Julius is playing like like a man out there, bro. Loving it. loving these Knicks, man. I don't even know if this is real, man. I, I can't bring myself to believe in my own eyes. It's real. My bro. eyes tell me we're a good team. It, CP, it, are we a good team? It, we're a good team. And it starts on the defensive end. And um, listen, this is Tibbs. We have our defensive coach. And these guys are buying in. And, and once again, quickly came in, made the adjustments on Trey Young. And Trey Young was getting his flops all over the place, bro. All over the place, JL. is calling way too many ticky-tack fouls. 
Oh, um, my God. Um, jumping into people and everything like that. Quickly ended up turning the tides on him. Yes. And got Trey Young on a shooting foul on a three-pointer. Because, you know, Quickly is very uh, crafty when it comes to that as well. Quickly with the poise and the veteran presence early on in his third game into the season. What I tell you? What I tell you? The kid is ready. Give ready. him the keys. The kid is ready. He's battle tested. He fears nothing. He's ready. Peyton, I thought he, he set the tone again for us nicely this game. He was aggressive, got into the paint, he was attacking, he was looking to score, and he was doing so. Yeah. Third quarter, it got a little bit too much. Too much tunnel vision, wasn't finding anybody, wasn't kicking it out. And and before you knew it, we were down by 15. I thought Kev had a good fourth, lousy Woo. third. Kev yes. made some timely plays for us in that third quarter, some winning plays. He knocked down a couple corner three, had a nice whip around pass for RJ. I think RJ hit like a mid range or something like that. So I think yeah. I thought Kev had some underrated plays for us in the fourth quarter as well. Again, once again, Mitch not getting into foul trouble, standing straight up sometimes, blocking some shots sometimes, and impacting the game on both ends. The, the Gotham lob was in today. Gotham lob was in. Clutch defensives, closing stops by Mar Monster Mitch. Mitch, please put Mitch, some respect please. on his name. He's growing up on us, Jay Ellis. Listen, man, I'm, I'm happy, man. I'm happy. These boys are playing hard. CP, we have like a top nine defense right now, CP. We got to respect. CP, I was, I, was checking, I was checking the stats. We top nine defense, bottom of the league in offense, and we're winning. Ju we're Julius and RJ leading the That's league in minutes. I'm telling you, it. Julius had no legs at, at the end of this thing, man. None. 25 points, 11 boards, 5 of 7 from the free throw line, 10 of 19 overall. Bully Barrett was in his bag tonight. The three-pointer wasn't dropping, but everything else was going for him, yeah. man. You're, he's already averaging seven rebounds for the game. Mm -hmm. Today was a monster with the 11 rebounds. Um, you saw some of that mid-range game that we were talking about, especially with the clock going down. He seems like he knows, he knows his spot. mid-range. I'm telling yeah. you, that mid-range, forget the yeah. threes. The threes, look, he hit it. He hit a nice timely three here. He went one from five from three, but he got mm -hmm. one timely, knocked one, knocked one down. But it's the mid-range and the bully ball is where he's going to make his bread and butter. And the free throws are coming along. I don't know what exactly the number is. Tonight, he shot... 71% from the free throw line, but as of the season, he's in the 70s percent yep. range, which should tell us what we need to tell. He should be averaging around 18 to 20 points Agreed. a game this season. Oh, no Burks tonight. Burks still out with the ankle. Looking forward to seeing him back, JL. You know, I think I think the people are ready to get Reggie Bullock up out of here. Yeah. But I, I think I think, you know, his defense is still there. And I the think that's why still Tibbs still likes him out there. And I also think he likes him out there as more of a low usage potential yeah. at the three. Unfortunately, you're not getting consistent enough buckets from him on the offensive side. And so where does he go once Burks gets back? I hope they put Burks back in the starting lineup, but we'll have to see. Yeah, only shooting 32% from the three-point line. Like, like you said, when Burks comes back, we'll see what happens because, you know, the, the defense isn't as good as Reggie Bullock's defense, but sometimes you're just shooting so well yeah. that it overcompensates. If you play Jay Boogie, what's Let's going go. on, man? Hey, yo, happy 21, man. Hope everybody's staying healthy and safe. Glad we all made it through the year successful. True. We're starting off a brand new year, even more successful, man. Hope everybody healthy and safe, man. But I'm going to get right to it. First thing first. I need somebody to tell Tobias Harris I'm looking for him because he stole that Eastern Conference Player of the Week. True. You don't deserve that. They robbed my man <laughs> this this week for that Eastern Conference uh, Player of the yeah. Year. Julius Randle just made history. He was averaging he was averaging all um, 20 points per game, double in assists, and double in the rebounds almost. Almost. You robbed that man completely. But let's move on. Tonight was a big game, man. Very big game for us, man. I like what's happening, what's going on. We don't knock off four teams that was in the top eight that had winning records. Cleveland, even though they're going to fall down, they're going to fall down. We still beat them when they had a winning record. We beat Milwaukee. We beat Indiana. Tonight we beat Atlanta. Time out, time out, time out, time out. All that y'all don't want to hear the P word. See, when you're a basketball player, you don't come into the season talking about you ain't trying to make the playoffs. So it's up to us to start making them dudes up. From now on, we're going to call it the top eight. Right now,
now we're trying to get in that top eight because I know we're better than Orlando. We own Atlanta last year, and we showed that this year. We shut them down this year. Our defense, we shut them all the way down. They was one of the leading scoring teams of the other of the, of the league. We shut that down and made them play our game. You know what I'm saying? We two and one on this road trip. We started out shaky in Tampa. That was because it was the New Year's. Ain't no telling they might have had drinks or whatever came out there. You know what I'm saying? Swabbed up or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But they got over the hump and went back to back victories. I love what's going on. Tonight was a very big game. Randall played and kept, kept and held us down all the way through the first half. But when we start struggling in that third quarter, Tom Thibodeau know what he was doing. He didn't leave him out there just to stay out there. He left him out there so he could find out if they can if they could figure out how to win the game themselves. But once they didn't, he realized they couldn't do it, that's when he went back to coaching. He started shipping up his roster and everything. And when he got to the fourth and he put that boy in that game, <laughs> I've been telling you all the while, I understand, oh boy, he's been playing good on the last two games, but take him out that game. If that boy quickly played a whole fourth quarter as a starter, man, yeah, you see facts. his numbers rise even higher, man. We're going to salute and follow up behind that boy, man. He's doing his thing, man. But them boys came in, they cold, they took that fourth quarter, man. Like, this belonged to us, man. This was our game tonight, man. And them boys, they, they, they died and held down for a while. You see them walking around with their hands on their, on their, on yeah, their, on their hips tired, and everything tired. like that. But Tom Thibodeau kept coaching. That's the difference from the coaches we had last year to this year. He know when to coach. He know when to call timeouts. He know when to true, motivate. True. He know when to make subs. He know when to make all decisions. At the right time, man. And I love what he's doing, man. Salute to Tom Thibodeau, man. Salute to the whole roster. A, a whole roster played good tonight. Even though they tied on the road, man. Big time game tonight. Big time, Big time Big game. Time. Put some respect on our team, man. Big Put time. some respect on our city, man. Right now, the Knicks is on the verge. But well, big up to the Knicks, way. Big up to the whole Nick Nick. Nick organization, man. Let's big go. up to 2021, man. Peace and love, man. Put some respect on our name. Let's go. Put some respect on our city, man. That's fact, man. We here, man. Facts. We over 500 right now. <laughs> with the worst with the worst starting schedule it was. We ranked number one in the far as the our toughest schedule. And right now, <laughs> we over 500, man. Keep Let's doing go. what y'all doing. Let's go. Support, man. Top eight, man. Top Let's eight, go. man. Forget the P word. We're trying to get to the top eight, man. Peace, love, and happiness.